Hi everyone, this is Ginger from In Sheep's Clothing Yarn Shop in Torrington here once again uh, to show you some new knitting tricks. Today we're going to be doing a spiral knit tube sock. So this is specifically for those of you who are a little apprehensive about making socks. This one right here, a lot of people, what, they, what they're really kind of worried about um, is the heel and the toe. And with the spiral bound, uh, spiral knit sock, you don't have to worry about making your heel and uh, doing the shaping for your toe. So, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And just with a little bit of concentration, uh, you can make this work. Um, I do recommend, um, it's, it's a good beginner project, but I do recommend that you be able to really know the difference between your knits and your pearls and to be able to really recognize them. Um, the sock starts out with a very simple three by three ribbing, which is knit three, purl three. And this is, happens to be done for four inches, but this is the kind of uh, project that you can really kind of custom custom make it for yourself or for um, as if you're making it for a gift since this time of the year is is perfect for this this kind of a project um, so you can make it a shorter ribbing if you want you can make it a longer ribbing um, and the sock itself because of the way that it's knit you can make it a short sock you can make it a really long sock because what's great about this stitch is that it has a lot of stretch and because it has a lot of stretch, you don't have to worry about the fitting for the heel and the toe on this. Um, now this is kind of like about a tube, tube sock length. And what's great about this particular project, um, this particular sock is you can use it as like a bed sock. So if you like to, if you're one of those people that likes to wear socks in bed, keep those toes warm, it's perfect for that. Or if you're on the couch and uh, like me and you're getting drafts, you can put these on and you'll be nice and cozy. Um, they're a little, this one I'm doing in a little bit heavy of worsted weight yarn and it's a little, little chunky. So you want to be able to either put them in clogs if you want to wear them as socks. Um, but you could also do this sock in a lighter weight yarn. You just have to adjust your pattern a little bit. Um, it's a, um, uh, a six stitch repeat. So you just you would need to do a little swatch and just see how big or small, that you, how many stitches you want to put on. If you need it to be bigger, you're going to add more stitch repeats. So to get started with this project here, I just put on a six stitch repeat on here. But I basically, I want to kind of show you a couple little tricks I have when it comes to working with double pointed needles. Um, that's another thing that beginners and maybe not even so many beginners don't care for is working with double points. There are other ways of getting around it. We did do the show where we did two circular needles uh, that we worked in the round. You can also use one really super long circular needle. Um, and I just found out that there's these new uh, double pointed needles that are uh, done at like 90 degree angle with, with a 90 degree angle and you still work them like double points, but because it has the angle, you don't have to maybe worry so much about losing your stitches off the edges of your needles. So we're going to give those a try one of these days too. So what I like to do when I'm working with my double pointed needle, uh, when I'm first casting on is I cast all my stitches onto one needle. And then what I'll do like this particular pattern. So it's a knit three, purl three and I have odd needles today, um, so we'll just go with that. So we're going to knit three. Now this would be the time where what you could do is you knit three and purl three. Now this is where you could divvy up your stitches on your, ne on your three needles now. But if you're a little nervous about doing that and it's, it's a little futzy because you've got these needles and, and, you're, and you're nervous about it, what I suggest doing is let's just work across straight. So knit three, the next stitches. Keep track of this purl three. 
Now this particular pattern called for 48 stitches, so we're not doing all 48 stitches. I just put on a, um, I think 24, so it's divisible by six. It is um, a little easy to kind of lose track of yourself with this particular pattern because it is so easy. So I did find that although that it went very quickly for me, I had to be careful that I didn't make mistakes. I just want to count here. Three, three, three. I think I messed up, but we're just, I must have had an extra stitch on here. So I'm just going to knit two together, or purl two together. Okay. So now, turn it around. So now that you have something substantial on your needle, you can divvy up your, your stitches now. So what I would do is knit my two, knit my three, actually. Okay. Oh, and of course I'm losing myself here and I'm forgetting that I want to divvy them up on my needles. So there's needle number one. Then I'll take needle number two and I will knit across some of my stitches on the needle number three. You could work out the math so that they're evenly divided or you can kind of eyeball them like I tend to do or and fix them later. Um, I also like to end with my purl stitches at the end of each needle. So this way I'm starting with knit stitches. There we go. Okay. I really messed this up all the way doing another decrease here because I had another extra stitch. I must not have counted so well. Okay, so now I have my stitches set up on my three needles and it's just a whole lot easier to see what you've got going here. So what I want to do, so that was my first needle, second, third, and what I'm just going to do is not use my tail, get that out of the way, make a triangle, turn upside down, and you're going to join your last needle with your first, but you have something that you can actually look see, and you don't have your needles falling out of your stitches. <clears throat> and then just by knitting those first stitches, you're joined. Now the other little trick too, is that as you're doing this, you should really try to maintain that your needles are facing down. Because if you tend to hold it like this, what you're going to find is you are slowly turning your work inside out. And that's not a good thing. So I'm just, I'm being conscious that the bottom, even though it doesn't look like it's facing the bottom, that um, the opening of my work is facing down at least while I'm working it. And the more that you do, the more that you work, the more you have to hold on to. And I also like this needle to be over the next needle. Just helps to keep them out of the way. So anyway, so now I'm joined. <clears throat> and then what you'll do is just keep knitting your ribbing for as long as you want it to be. I know as a, if you're a non-knitter and you're looking at this, you're, you're probably shaking your head because of all these needles and the points going every direction. 
um, hard to make heads or tails out of what's happening. But see, there's your little cuff starting up. And then you have a little extra here that you would just sew together because you did actually did a couple rows rather than joining right off the bat. But I don't, I, I've never found that's a big deal just to sew up that little bit there. So I'm just going to do this one more needle. Now, once you've done this, once you've done your ribbing, the interesting part starts. Okay, so there's our little cuff, and you can see that we have a knit two, or knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three ribbing going around. Okay, and that's what this is right here. There's our knit three, purl three ribbing all the way around. And you can see how nice and stretchy it is, and that it's going to really hug, hug your leg once you put it on. Now, what happens after this, <clears throat> that creates your spiral and creates this nice, really cushy ribbing, is that your knit three, purl three, you move it over a stitch. So, like right up here on the top where I'm at, I'm ready to, to actually start another round. Actually, let me steal a needle from here. Okay, so what I was doing was, there's my knit three on my needle. Now, this is my beginning and my end right here, okay? And actually, I'm just going to put one little marker because what, I, what I've been doing is I've been following my tail. And that tells me where my beginning and end is. But with the spiral, it's a little harder to kind of keep track of where the tail is. So what I really should do, which I wasn't doing because I just didn't have a split marker at the time. Because you can't put one of these little round ones because it won't stay on your needle. So I take the split marker and I'll put it on the stitch right there. So I know this is my my beginning and there's my end. So, okay, so there's our knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three, knit three. And you can see how it's continuing, knit, uh, purl three, knit three on my next needle. So this is what happens. Instead of going purl three, knit three, we're gonna move a stitch over. So what I'm going to do is, instead of having, I am going to start with a knit one. So I do knit one. And now I'm going to work my purl three. So there's one, two, three. Now that third purl stitch is now going to be on top of my first knit stitch. And this is what happens is you keep moving a stitch over, moving a stitch over, which is creating the spiral. So I'm going to work this round. Um, I did purl three, so now I'm going to start with knit three, which moves me over on top of my purl. This is why it's good to know, really be able to recognize your knits and your purls. Once you've established that first round, then it makes it easier to see what you've got. And also, it's a lot of fun to work with the multicolored yarns, but sometimes that could kind of create a little bit of a distraction from your stitches. So you really have to pay attention and have really good lighting. Um, so now I'm going to be doing knit three. There we go. Purl three. And again, every time you're going to see that you've got a stitch moving over, so you know that you're 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 right. So there's my end. I knit one, turn my needles around for my next needle. So it's knit one, knit two, knit three, which is going on top of my previous purl, purl, and purl three. And I do kind of keep checking that first round to make sure that I'm right. I did um, 
I was working on this last night and realized that if you make a big mistake, like it's really easy because the four rounds go by very quickly on 48 stitches. Um, I kind of got lost track. I was listening to TV too and realized I had done eight rows without changing my pattern. So rather than trying to take it out stitch by stitch on the needle, I just took my needles out like I normally do and pulled out four rows. <clears throat> Except that when you go to pick this up, it's very difficult to tell where you where the beginning and the end is, even with the tail. So um, I kind of recommend really keeping track of it. And um, if you do have to rip out, kind of do it stitch by stitch. So let's see, that ended with a purl one. So now I need to do purl two. And I'm coming up on my marker pretty quick here. Now, once you've, you've established that first round, it's a lot easier to keep track of what you're doing. But again, you have to keep track of those four rounds. Uh, let's see, that's three. And now you might be thinking, well, what happens? Because you just started your pattern off wrong. You put it off a stitch. Well, you end up off a stitch at the end, which makes your pattern work out just right. Which is why it's hard to pick up if you've made a mistake and you've ripped out your stitches because you can't find the beginning and the end because it all matches. Okay, knit. Knit three. Pearl three, and I'll end with a knit two because I started with a knit one. So you can kind of look at your work and see that there's my pearl three, knit one, two, and my knit one is over on this needle now, but the rest of the pattern continues. So now I'll continue working um, this pattern for another three rounds. Yeah, the multicolors can make it a little tricky. I would probably recommend if you wanted to start this project um, for the first time is maybe to use a solid. Or if you don't really want a total solid, you could do like a Tweety uh, yarn, which would look really nice. Um, give it a little interest and um, make it easier for yourself. But I have to say I really do like the multicolors because it does give you that really adds to the swirl of the pattern. I wasn't sure that I would care to work this particular design. I thought it would either be monotonous or really hard to keep track of. And I didn't really, I, I didn't find that. It was more interesting because you're changing every four rows. You do have to kind of pay a little bit of attention so that you don't lose track of where you're at. I know that putting this marker is really going to be helpful and I wish I had, had used it last night when I was working. And if you do lose track of where you're at, you can always count your rows. Um, and just count up and see where you're at. Because I was finding that I was kind of losing track and I just kept checking to see like one, two, th okay, so that's a third right there. So, and you want to make sure when you're counting your rows that you include the stitches that are on your needles because that is a row with those, those stitches on there. Okay, so we're purling here. I want to get to, I am pretty much done with this sock. I'm just doing this one additional round so that you could see what we're doing here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to show you uh, the toe, which I really like because it's very simple. And for those of you who don't like grafting toes together, you know, <clears throat> grafting those live stitches, you'll like this because there's no grafting at all. You're just decreasing down to just a few stitches. And then like the thumb on your mittens, you just pull the yarn through your stitches 
and fasten it off and you're done. Okay, so this other round. I'm actually going to make this our my last my last round just to make things go a little speedier here. Um, there's my marker, so this is the last round. And then after that, we're going to start our decreases. And another thing is I was actually able to try this sock on um, and it was it fit perfect so I'm happy about that you just have to be careful of that one sock syndrome where you make the one sock and then you kind of it's a little tough sometimes to get that second sock done one thing that I like to do to kind of get around that is I will, it takes more needles, but I will get both of them started this way and you can go back and forth between both socks. So this way, if you have two done, two started, you know, you don't feel so bad. It gives you the impetus to keep on going. So one more needle to go here, and we'll start our decreases. Almost there. Okay, last two knits. Okay, so there's a marker, so we're ready to start this round. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do for the decrease is just you're going to knit one, and then you're going to knit two together all the way around. So this makes pretty quick work of getting rid of these stitches. One, knit two together. And yes, I do knit through the back of my stitches. Okay, now what happens when you end up with an odd stitch is I just move it onto my next needle because that's supposed to be a knit two together. So I'll do a knit two together now. It's not a big deal if you just have to move your stitches around. Okay, knit two together. And like any decreasing, what you're going to do is after you do one decrease round, you do an even round, which means you just work it plain, just knit or, or even as they refer to. Okay. Knit one. Now I doubt very much I'm going to get totally to the end, which is... A little disappointing. I really did want to get get this done for you, but we can cheat and we can put the sock on the sock blocker here, so you can at least see what it's going to look like when it's opened up. Two together. Okay. Then the next round after this is just going to be plain. Okay, like that. And just a plain round, okay. But it'll decrease this very quickly. And you're basically going to work until you have eight stitches left. So 
So the toe portion will be a little bit smoother because you're not going to have these ridges like you do now. I'm going to finish off this last needle and then we're going to put it on the sock blocker so you can see what it looks like. And just imagine what the toe is going, going to look like totally done. Okay, so there we go. So we take our blocker and we put it in. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? It looks totally different now. And then this will be closed up for your toe. Oops, the toe's way down there. But look at that. And the, the, I really like that. And it really shows off your stripes. And it really shows off the pattern. And you can see how it hugs your foot. So it's a really, it's an interesting sock. And you can see how simple it is to make. And you could whip these out very quickly. Um, I mean, I did this almost in one night. But um, I take a lot of, I take a, I take, I sit and I knit for quite a bit in the evenings. But if you figure you could whip out a couple of these in a week, these would be great holiday gifts or birthday presents or just a, something nice for somebody that needs to keep those toes warm. But hope that you're going to give this a try and um, like I said maybe you want to keep a, a simple yarn uh, to make your life easier but it's very very simple and just look on Ravelry for a spiral um, tube sock and then you can make your own. Thanks again see you next time. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.